Artificial intelligence, the arms race is on and the whole world is watching. AI can paint like Van Gogh and can even help paralyzed people walk again. But there's more to it. It can monitor us and it can amplify disinformation. Is AI our salvation or our damnation? Today on Shift. AI technology is pretty advanced. It can write academic essays, identify cancer cells or even replace people like me. But with AI there are new gateways for misuse as well. AI crime is on the rise. Warm GPT for example, available on the darknet it can automate the perfect phishing attack but that's not all. Pope Francis in a puffer jacket. The image went viral earlier this year and was generated by AI. While it could be seen as a joke, so-called deep fakes can cause great harm. Just recently, the Republican National Committee released this AI-generated election ad. The clip warns of a dystopian future, should the current president, Joe Biden, make it to the White House again. I am not Morgan Freeman. What you see is not real. What you see is a deep fake, a technology driving AI scams. A deep fake conned Guo, a Chinese national, out of 600,000 US dollars. A scammer used AI software to impersonate Guo's best friend on a video call, manipulating Guo into revealing his bank details. That's not the only way AI can be used to manipulate us. Perhaps even more alarming is the potential use case of large language models in providing disinformation, that is messages that are deliberately intended to be misleading. And here I worry that large language models might enable propaganda at scale and in a way that's tailored that we've never seen before. For example, the news agency Reuters tested the Chinese AI chatbot Ernie and found that it was reluctant to answer questions about Chinese President Xi Jinping or about more recent events in China's history. It's unclear whether this was intentional or a programming flaw, but it shows just how easily AI can amplify misinformation. AI has also been known to discriminate against people. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all these let's say complex, uh, complex algorithms and data sets replicate the biases that we humans have. AI recruitment systems, for example, have been shown to be biased against women. It's been proven that facial recognition technology is less accurate for people of color, with people being arrested for crimes they never committed. Experts and politicians in many parts of the world want to regulate the use of AI. In July 2023, the UN Security Council met for the first time to discuss the risks. Even the head of the company behind ChatGPT, Sam Altman, is proposing more regulation for AI. At a US Senate hearing in May 23, he pointed out the dangers of the technology, but he also says the opportunities outweigh the risks. Others are calling for AI development to be stopped completely until regulators catch up. Why? Google's top executive, Sundar Pichai, also wants AI to be regulated, globally. That's because, he claims, his technology is as dangerous as nuclear weapons. Pichai seems to be serious about this. The executive wants to make certain things unavailable for users. Google's text-to-video AI, Fanaki, will not generate clips depicting people, for example. Hundreds of researchers and entrepreneurs are calling for a pause in AI development. Among them, Sanda Pichai and Tesla boss Elon Musk. An open letter for such an AI moratorium has been signed by more than 33,000 people. But the call could also be an elaborate corporate move for big players to catch up with the top AI developers. After all, Musk's new company, XAI, is working on its own chatbot, TruthGPT. Even Google's chatbot, Bard, can't keep up with ChatGPT just yet. So one reason for recent calls for a freeze could be economic rivalry. 
A quick look to China proves there's more to it than just economic interests. The government there has realized the potential AI has to consolidate its power. Chatbots in China seem to be reluctant to say anything critical about the regime. And since 2019, the government has been using AI to monitor people and evaluate their behavior. The EU, on the other hand, is looking to ban AI surveillance. Legal standards for AI use are being drafted, but the so-called AI Act still needs to be given the green light. Was this image created by artificial intelligence? It's not always easy to tell. Content or products generated by AI are set to be labeled in the future. One of the pillars of the EU's new AI Act. We ask for uh, a degree of transparency. We want people to know, even when they are interacting with a safe chatbot, that this is not a person, it's a chatbot. The priority is the regulation of AI applications that might interfere with people's fundamental rights. We have tried to uh, bridge uh, these two approaches, uh, pro fundamental rights and protections, and on the other end, the need to sustain innovation and development of uh, AI uh, in Europe. AI will be regulated to varying degrees depending on where it's applied. For low-risk tools, such as intelligent spam filters, there will be fewer requirements. Stricter regulation is in the works for applications that could more seriously impact users' lives. For example, AI tools that pre-select job applicants or that check customers' credit ratings. AI systems deemed too dangerous will be banned altogether, such as biometric surveillance systems or social scoring applications. Companies that use AI will have to register it in an EU-wide database. AI systems and how they operate will be open to the public to ensure maximum transparency. Is the EU leading the way for a future with AI, or is it putting the brakes on innovation? The impact of these regulations is already showing, for example, in India, one of the world's largest tech markets. Many companies that are working with European companies, they have to worry a lot about regulations, because Europe is sort of taking the lead in terms of regulating AI, regulating data. For many people in India, AI is already playing a central role in their work. Several startups are coming up, both in terms of developing new algorithms and also using AI systems for various applications, you know, from dating to uh, finance to health, agriculture, you know, across the board. So, so that's the very exciting part about AI in India. But for a long time, India's government wanted nothing to do with regulation, despite experts' warnings. The European Parliament passed its version of the AI Act setting the tone. AI applications are to be regulated, much like the blockchain-based Web3. The discussion is well underway. As to how the laws should look. So one is, it needs to be bias-free. You know, it could be gender bias, it could be community bias, racial bias these things. The second is accountability. You know, I can build an AI system, I can use it in many applications, but then if it fails, who is accountable? Is it me, the builder of that system? Is it the person who deployed this? For now, the debate in India is focused on the protection of user data. The ethical aspects of AI usage, however, haven't taken center stage. Data protection is hotly debated in the field of AI, largely due to the fact that AIs are trained with vast amounts of our data. Companies like OpenAI, Google or Meta say they won't sell our AI data, but ultimately users have little to no control over what really happens with it. ChatGPT collects and stores all entered requests, even if users delete conversations with the bot. Next to the data and user profile, the chatbot can store information about the device used, such as the IP address and precise geolocation. Ideally, a chat with an AI should be like a conversation between real people. But this can lead us to reveal much more than intended. AI companies handle user data to improve their services. 
Many companies use the input to train the AI itself. The thing is, once the AI system has seen that data, it is there in its memory. You know, just like us humans, I see a person and then you say, erase that person from your memory, it's not happening. Same way for AI, it, you cannot erase it from its memory. So what does that mean for us users? In any case, we'll have much more personalized advertising. Microsoft, for example, recently started using ChatGPT in its search engine Bing. Information gained there could be used for tailored advertising. We should be mindful of what we tell AI systems. For instance, employees at companies like Amazon aren't allowed to use chatbots for work for fear of leaking trade secrets. No wonder so many countries are working on AI laws right now. In Latin America, however, there are different concerns. Argentina, for example, uses AI to monitor its prices. Still, regulation isn't the top priority for Latin American governments, says researcher Beatriz Buzaniche. The north-south divide in the field is brutal. Latin America is more than capable of training people, but individuals educated in our universities are quickly extracted from the region by working remote or even by moving to the north entirely. It is impossible to compete with the incentives for research that exist in the northern hemisphere. On the flip side, companies in rich countries outsource a lot of the human labor behind AI. There are many simple jobs here, like paperwork or training the AI itself, jobs you don't need much schooling for. Poorly paid, precarious work is outsourced to the South, while specialists trained at our universities work in the North. Corporations have been using this strategy for decades. One-size-fits-all rules for the AI industry may change that in the future. Singapore's government is relying on voluntary self-regulation by companies when it comes to AI. This could make Singapore a global hotspot for innovative AI development, but it could just as easily pave the way for misuse. What this means for users will only become apparent in the future. So, is regulation harmful to innovation or should AI be more tightly controlled? Let us know what you think. That's it from me. See you next time. Bye.